Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today we're going to be talking about course cross origin resource sharing. This video is for those who don't understand anything about course or perhaps you know how to fix course in ASP.NET Core but you just don't know anything about the details that are involved in fixing. There's not much to say about course other than to show it to you so if you're enjoying the video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions make sure to leave in the comment section, check out the description, join the discord server, I have a course that is out. I recommend that you get it if you want to know C Sharp as I do it. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Here I have two applications, an API and the other app. The API will be the primary focus of interest for us. So I'm going to open up the program CS. And by the way, both of these are empty templates. And then we have the other app, which is just going to output other to the browser. Both of the applications are already running and all that I'm really using the other website for is to just have something on the domain so I can actually interact with something that is on an other domain through the console. So let me show you an example. If I type out fetch and I start typing out the URL that is right over here. So just like that, execute and I encounter a course error. Now what I'm going to do first is so you can actually find this information later on, I will open a new tab, I will <laughs> try to Google for access control allow origin. And here is the primary point of interest for us is this section. These are the main headers that you need to be aware of. And if you don't understand why we need to be aware of these headers, don't worry about it. Just pay attention to these access control allow credentials, headers, methods, origin, and then access control request headers and request method. The two in the middle here, we will go over them, but they're not so important. The point is you should have some kind of feel for these headers after watching this video and then you should be able to find this documentation again and again and remind yourself of how this stuff works and basically be able to rediscover this information. So uh, we will leave the other tab open, the API, we don't really care about it, we're going to close it. And here we're going to go ahead and read the error or actually it will be beneficial to understand first of all, what is a cross origin request. We have one origin, we have another origin and one way that you can inspect origins is if we go to the network tab and we inspect the request, we're making it to this origin. The origin is generally denoted by the address of the URL. Here the address is localhost 5181 and the request headers will contain an origin header and the origin here is localhost 5018. The origins are different hence cross origin request gets blocked and specifically this error is thrown by the browser. If you have server to server or console application to server communication, there is no course issues because this is a security feature of the browser. The browser automatically attaches headers. It automatically checks where the request is being sent from and to. And if the server is not configured to allow requests from a specific origin, if somebody is using a browser, the browser will be the last layer to protect the user, even though that the application that the user is using has failed. So now that we understand that it's a security feature of the browser, we can actually read the error and see what it says. So access to fetch at the origin that we're interested in from origin that we're at has been blocked by course policy. Okay, so the course policy is inside the browser. No access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource. This is basically saying that in the network tab, if we take a look at localhost, the resource that we're getting is on the server side. So the response is the resource. The mentioned header in the error is not present here. So again, no access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource. This is the requested resource, the header is not there, hence the error. And then the last sentence doesn't really matter that much. Let's go ahead and take the header over here. We're going to come back to our API. We're going to close the other app. And in addition to having this endpoint, we're going to add custom middleware. So use will add our HTTP context and then the next. We're going to execute the next, we will return it at the end. And before we return the next, we want to go to the response. 
we want to go to the headers and then we want to attach this header. So not sure why AC was missing at the beginning. I have clearly copied the whole thing. Let's remove the last two characters over here. And now what about the value that we want to place over here? Well, I can just tell you what to put in there or you can actually go to the source, go to the documentation and see what it says. The access control allow origin response header indicates whether the response can be shared with the requested code from the given origin. You can either specify all origins, you can specify a specific one, or you can say null, and it says basically don't use null. All right. So here are some examples. You can basically say that this is the origin that you are going to allow communication from. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead. Just take the URL, come back over here, place it over here, semicolon on the end, wait for the application to restart. Let's come back, execute the request again. We still get the error. However, the error is slightly different. It will say the access control allow origin header has a value of slash that is not equal to the supplied origin. If we take a look at the network localhost, we're going to see that again, the request headers, the origin, and by the way, this header is attached by the browser. In the response header, we have this origin right here. We can see that there is a mismatch in the origin. We're appending a slash. So that actually matters. Remove the trailing slash, wait for it to refresh, come back. We're going to go to the console and actually I'm going to clear the network tab. I'm going to re-execute the request and now it succeeds. If we come back to the network tab, we take a look at this. Everything works as expected and you're going to get your hello world response in here. All right. So that's really the first layer is just saying this communication is allowed from this source. Then you have these other more fine grained controls. Which methods can you execute? Which headers can you attach? And credentials basically says, can you attach secure cookies or authorization tokens? These two headers, we will see what they look like in just a second. And then expose headers, we'll take a look at those in just a second as well. For the methods and headers, let's take a look at this. We'll come back over here, network, localhost. And by default, the method that we're talking about here is get and then the headers of the request that we're talking about are the headers over here. All of these headers are attached by the browser. So the browser knows that these are sound, these are secure. If you go ahead and attach your own header, that is when things will be problematic. Let's take a look at this. We're going to go to the console. We're going to bring up fetch again and let's actually clear the console. I can add a second parameter to the fetch request over here, which is configuration that can accept headers and headers is just a key value collection. I will say that this is my header and this is going to hold some kind of value of a so just another key value pair. If I execute this again, course policy stops me. I am not allowed to attach my own custom headers. If we take a look at the network tab, what is happening here? If I close this, we will see that there was actually two requests that happened here. The first request that happens is the options request and then the actual request. If we take a closer look at the pre-flight request, if you've ever were curious about what the pre-flight request ever was, it is the initial request that sends along two additional headers, access control request header and access request method. So these two over here which basically give an instruction to the server that there's a request going out that is about to execute this method with these additional headers. So if I come back to the console, bring this up, let's shorten the headers to something like my A header and then a second header that says my B header and then give it a value of B, execute this. We'll come back to the network, close this off. I know this is a little bit out of order, but pre-flight happens first. If we take a look at this now, we'll see that my A and my B are being supplied over here, okay? So the pre-flight request happens first and it says, look server, these things are about to be executed. Is it good or not? If we take a look at this request, this is basically executing an options method. And one way that you can handle this is, and actually the way that is handled by the app use course middleware is they have a HTTP methods class that can check is 
options and you just put ctx uh, request method in here and if it is an options pre-flight request you can just return from here uh, because we're about to make this asynchronous i will go to the ctx i will just take the response and i will complete the response so complete async i wait on here make this asynchronous I'll copy this line over here and I will say, look, we want to allow the following headers. So I'll go to access control, allow headers. I'll take this and here's the notation. So you supply the header, comma, header, or you say all headers. All right, let's come back. Uh, let's supply the following response header. We will then say that my A and my B are allowed. The browser is sending you the information about what is about to be requested. You can place any logic that you want. Generally, it is pretty simple in most cases where you're saying, I have this app that is over there on a different domain. It needs to make a request. So just allow the following things from there. It is never a case of browser is passing these headers. Let's execute tons of logic. Sometimes it is actually good if you're trying to make a change to the server cross origin and then you actually want to deal out a CSRF token as a result of the options request that should be attached to the actual post request. So that options request gets some really good utilization. So anyway, we have attached the following. Let's come back over here. The application should restart in the background. I'll clear here. I will clear here. Uh, let's bring up the previous fetch. We'll execute it and everything is fine. Again, coming back to the network tab, we have the two requests. So first the pre-flight request, we can see in the response that we are allowing this origin and we are allowing these headers. And again, just to restate that the original pre-flight options method request is notifying the server what is about to be executed. Then on the second request, which is actually happening to get the hello world, doesn't need the verification that this header is allowed to be sent. It is just sent along with the request, right? The validity of the header is checked with the initial pre-flight request. Okay. So coming back to the documentation, we basically take care of this header of the allow headers method of these two methods. The main ones that are left are these two and then the expose headers and max H. The methods, as you can imagine, is pretty self-explanatory. If we go to the console, I'll bring this up and I will say the method that we want to be executing is post instead of get. I'll execute this and again, this is aborted. So first of all, it's not allowed. So let's just quickly add a endpoint to which we can post and that should refresh. Let's execute this. That is allowed, no problems. If we then go to try to put, that is now being blocked. So get and post are the base tier requests. And you can start saying that put is a special type of method and that will get blocked. This is where, again, you will need to go to the pre-flight request. You will need to grab the allow control methods header. We'll place this over here and we're saying we are allowing put. This is okay. Coming back to the documentation, again, we can specify that we are allowing multiples of these, right? So post, get, options, put, uh, let this restart. Let's come back over here. Retrying the request. This time I'm getting a 405 because I don't have an endpoint. If I add an endpoint, it's going to start working. But hopefully you get the idea. If we go to the network tab, again, we will see the pre-flight request and then the failing fetch. So taking a look at the pre-flight, this is the initial options that are going out. We're saying, yes, this request is valid. And then the next one, ASP.NET Core is saying that there is only a get and post on this route. You don't have a put. So you get a 405. Coming back around to the documentation to give you an idea about access control, allow credentials. This is where you would specify on your fetch request credentials include, it would start including cookies cross origin. So if you want to authenticate cross origin or if, or if you're attaching authentication headers cross origin, you need to specify access control allow credentials. Some limitations that I think ASP.NET Core imposes of you, on you is if you're using allow all credentials, you cannot use all methods and all origins and all headers. You need to basically constrain things a little bit more clearly. If you are 
passing credentials from this domain, you need to be specifying exactly how you want that communication to work. Expose headers is slightly easier to demonstrate than uh, starting to have a whole cookie layer and putting cookies in the browser and uh, sharing them cross domain. For example, if we come back over here, we will duplicate this, we will say some custom header secret exclamation mark. This header is not going to be visible to the response over here. We will wait on this, uh, store this in a result. Uh, let's actually change this to get just like that execute. We have our headers and on headers we can have entries and then we use object from entries just to enumerate this a little bit fiddly. But there we go. Oh my God, I missed out an R. And there we have it. Okay. So these are all the headers that we have managed to get from the response. Okay. If we go over here and we say, these are the headers that we want to expose across cross origin requests, we'll put this over here, we will say, this is a header that we want to expose right over here, come back, go back over here, I'll just clear everything. I will re execute this request. I'll bring up the entries and now this custom header is here. Okay. Now with the SP.NET Core, obviously you don't want to be building up your own middleware that allows you to do all of this stuff. Here we basically say you want to use course and then how the logic is going to happen over here. You actually go to the builder, you say services and you say add course, and then you have your course options just like that course options, you say add policy, you give it a name, you say I want to execute this name policy, right? So this has to match. And then you have a policy builder. On the policy builder, you say things like with origins with method. So for example, we would move this over here, you're allowing things with these origins, with these methods. So let's say, but place it over here, right? As it's a string array. So you can specify multiple ones of these, you cannot just put a string directly, you can say allow credentials, or you can say any origin, any method. And basically, now you can see how what you're writing over here, how that is going to reflect like in the middleware and how that is actually structured against a standard that is working across multiple browsers. Now, if you have a course issue, and you basically just want to solve it, you're not too interested about specifying the constraints, you basically say allow any origin, any method, any header, and you're done. If you are including allow credentials, you basically have to say, okay, only from this specific origin, allow any header, any method, and then you should be good. This will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. If you would like the source code for this video, as well as my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. Your help will be very much appreciated. A very, very big special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You helped me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.